from Appleton, Wisconsin. This is the Anderson Pens Podcast. Welcome to APTV episode 474 for Thursday, January 19th, 2023. This week, we have banter, news, updates, something completely different again, a new contest winner, a new contest, plus new items from Estherbrook and Sailor that are coming soon. Hey, Steph. Hey, Brian. What begins with the W and ends with the T? So many things, but I don't know. What begins with the W? And ends with a T. Oh. <laughs> All right. This week, we're coming to you from Petco. Started as a mail-order veterinary supply company in California, it is now unequivocally where the pets go, except for our pets that are all cats, and they're like, nah, we'll stay put. With 1,500 locations in U.S., Mexico, and Puerto Rico, at least two of them are in Appleton. And I've been to both. Ho, ho. So that's where I guess where I go to get my pet supplies. Excellent. They have Petco. They have mm-hmm. the uh, they have that cool. You can buy the um, uh, the bulk uh, litter and stuff, and you pour it in there. And oh, that's handy dandy. Cool, cool, cool little place. Oh, it's been a while for me. And we're also, uh, this week we're also coming up on National Cheese Lovers Day. Oh my day, goodness. What day? Friday? Base, yeah, t- uh, Friday, January 20th, so tomorrow. Oh, I'm, it's like my new favorite holiday of the year. I mean, <laughs> we are, we're in Wisconsin, so I feel like we, we, we live, we live this dream every day, uh, as, as the cheese making state. Somebody, somebody from California is going to be upset somebody with me. Somebody will be. But... Uh, we have basic principles of cheese making. Pretty simple. Let the milk go sour, separate the curds from the whey, then salt the curds and let them age. Boom. Now we're all cheese makers. Great. Just like that. Here in Wisconsin, it's fun because we've got lots of different places where they make cheese. So they have a lot of squeaky cheese curds available, which is apparently something that people yes. elsewhere don't know. Yes, that's correct. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's they have just, to squeak. Yeah, yeah. If they don't squeak, they're not, they're not cheese curds. They're not. They're not done right. Mm-hmm. So, uh, mm-hmm. cheese. Uh, you, you know who makes a great cheese burrito? Mm. That's like cheese with more cheese and cheese. Mm. Go down to down the street to Garden View, and they make a cheese burrito that's ridiculous. That it's sounds like amazing. cheese with a few extra things. So, but to celebrate for Cheese Lovers Day, a split one. That's- well, so we got January is National mm-hmm. Hobby Month. Uh, celebrate Hobby Month by sharing one of your favorite hobbies, trying a new hobby, and or taking a class. Do you have any other hobbies? I, well, uh, I, I joined a choir, so I'm trying to get I heard hobbies. about this. I heard about this. Yeah. Yes. I'm, I'm trying to cultivate a couple. We're going to try on a couple, see what fits, see what okay. doesn't. Okay, okay. How about you? How about you? Uh, I don't need any more hobbies. <laughs> I don't need any more. So I will stick with the ones that I have. Pen collecting. Pen collecting, yeah. That's good. That's good. That's good. Mission accomplished. Mission You've accomplished. You've done quite well. <laughs> We've done well. <laughs> I got it out of the house. Mm-hmm. Let's see. And uh, next month, we're coming up on February, which is Inca Rimo. For those who don't know, that is International Correspondence Writing Month. Not International Correspondence by Writing Month. I learned that yes, last week. Yes, I, I heard that last week. You were adding extra words in there. I, I wanted to make it fancier, but it's <laughs> fancy enough as it is. And it's their 10th in, year. In, in Cobrimo? Ooh. In Cobrimo? Makes it sound like a snake. 10th tenth, uh, tenth year. That's oh, yeah. the, I, I can't believe it's been 10 years. So, oh. but, uh, I, I, I still have... I don't think I've ever written. You don't ever. A you haven't ever completed it. I have not. But this year, this year maybe. Well, what does it? What does it? What do we have to do here for those that so, don't know? The challenge is to handwrite and mail or deliver one letter, card, note, or postcard every day during the month of February. For more information and for moral support, go to incarimo.org where you can learn all about it. Um, yeah, we also love hearing from you at the store. So if you need somebody to write to, we'll list our address below. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, we get we get quite a few every year. So. Uh, oh, that's, that's, that sounds fun. It's uh, it, And if you are out of your correspondence paper or anything, it's not too late to restock on your favorite inks and papers. But if you're fresh out of fountain pen friendly correspondence sets and you need something by February 1st, um, the deadline for getting that order to you is getting pretty close. It's, it's, so. it's getting here. 
Got to get on that. Also, pro tip that I just heard about, if you address your envelope or with a fountain pen and your ink is not waterproof, you can uh, prevent that ink from getting washed away in the mail by rubbing over it with wax. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yep. Like a, even just like a white candle. Yep. If yep. you don't have like proper sealing wax or anything. Yep. But that's a cool trick. That is. I'm going to try again this year. I mostly succeeded last year. Uh, I lost count because I did them all at once. And then I sent them out throughout the month. Uh, that's what I was uh, thinking I was going to do too. I think Lisa got 26 and then the other two were, I don't know, I think Eric got one. And did I send one to you? Probably not. Entirely possible, but I'm the, we, we established last week I'm the worst pen pal in the world. You are welcome to write to me for Inko Rimo. I cannot guarantee that. I, I think I, everybody's going to get a postcard and then they'll set me for the first week. <laughs> uh, we do have some news. Last week, uh, Lisa and I were on vacation. Uh, Eric was at a pen show. Uh, was there anybody here? You guys are here, I guess. Uh, now everybody is back. Eric got back yesterday. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, yeah, I guess maybe good. this is something you were supposed to read, but whatever. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm excited to hear hear what sort of stories everybody has brought back with them. Eric's back, but he's he was just recovering. I haven't yeah. really gotten oh. gotten the deets from him or from you. So what was, uh, was Florida? Florida was nice. It was uh, mid to high 70s every day. Never oh. never hit 80. Uh, walks on the beach. We were right on the beach, actually. Uh, and so at night, we went uh, we went to bed. We left the, the, the sliding door open. Uh, we were like on the second floor. And so that we could hear the ocean waves come in at night. And then we also got to see um, moonrise every night. It was like around 8, 9 o'clock. So every night, you would see the moonrise above the ocean. Uh, and so that was kind of cool, but uh, had a good time. We saw Lisa's mom, Lisa's brother, and lots of cousins and all that other stuff. So uh, helping uh, helping her mom uh, look for a new house. So oh, it was fun. Oh, exciting. So uh, glad to be back. Not glad to be back. You know how it is. I mean, so. I heard mid seventies, and I'm like, <laughs> you know, we could just rough. all go there. <laughs> we I think went, we went shelling every morning. It was nice, uh, but a couple couple folks were like, "Oh, you guys aren't wearing sweaters." Like, well, we live in Wisconsin. So. <laughs> yeah, I remember going to California in January. I was like, oh, this is balmy. Everybody else is so cold. Yeah. What did the nut say to the other nut in a game of tag? I'm a cashew. Last week, Eric and I did something a little different since, you know, we were unsupervised. We went through and brought out our favorite things that we thought were kind of underrated and cool. And our question last week was, uh, we we asked everybody to share a few of their own favorite underrated hidden gems. And uh, so we thought we'd just go through and feature some of the stuff that that our viewers mentioned in their comments. And, you know, of course, the stuff that you can, that that we can actually offer. Yeah, Hmm? yeah. So otherwise, it's just a tease. So I got a bunch of inks in front of me. So we've got uh, what do you got? Platinum pigmented inks. Platinum pigmented inks. Yes, uh, they mentioned carbon black and sepia. Were both mentioned by name. Uh, pigmented ink also comes in blue, but uh, this is kind of like the gold standard for for uh, permanent carbon uh, inks. Is the, the platinum carbon black? Um, really, really a nice ink. Uh, it does have a tendency to to, to coat rather well so if you're going to put it in a pen either uh, make sure to flush it out and clean it regularly or devote it just to that pen but really a really a nice waterproof um, ink and what else do you say you said uh, i've got pigmented sepia yeah so you can get it in a nice nice brown same bottles and then the the our co- our commenter that mentioned sepia also mentioned that the the it had a little bit of shading properties hmm. to it that that they really enjoyed okay well so, very cool. I never think about uh, water-resistant inks because I'd never have to write yep. anything archival, but that's really neat. Yeah. Um, so they they archival would mean that they have they would resist they'd be water resistant, and does that and then that also means they're light, fast, and more heat resistant than other inks? Uh, they can be. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't think one implies the other, but I mm-hmm. think in this case that's a pretty pretty good bet. So. Or carbon black, uh, definitely, definitely uh, hold up a lot better than regular dye-based inks. Huh. And just as a side note, if what you're really looking for is that water resistance, Platinum also makes a bunch of iron gall inks, the like citrus black and and mm-hmm. khaki yep. black yep. that series. Those are neat colors, actually. Yeah, yeah. I really citrus like citrus black the... is a neat one. Yep. 
Yeah, yeah, there are some really cool ones in there. And those ones, they're not all the way waterproof, but they'll leave like a gray shadow mm -hmm. as the as the color is washed away. And uh, I don't know about the black series, but the carbon black and the sepia black are both in uh, 60 milliliter bottles. Yeah, and yeah, I think the other ones are in the same uh, same style bottle too. Makes perfect sense. Cool. And uh, the other ink that we that we heard about what is this one that I I just have I love talking about great glistening glue on color versus glistening glue on it's my it's when we first got it every anytime anything went wrong it oh glistening glue ons it's just so fun to say so yeah so color versus ink this is a what is this a thirty mil thirty milliliter bottle. Yeah, yeah. I love that they put some of the the shimmering inks in their own bottle yep. because they're just too cool. And that's a yellow ink with a deep, warm, golden shimmer. Um, great for like Christmas cards or okay. any sort of when you need a little razzle dazzle. <laughs> and it also comes in uh, the 15 milliliter bottle if you get it in a two colored set with Photon, I believe. Oh, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Which is a really nice, like, seafoam colored green that probably looks really so nice. So that's one of those 6515 sets. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Those are very cool. Or, or in a 30, as we said. Yeah. Uh, we got some paper. Some people talked about paper, it looks like. Yeah, yeah. What do we got papers here? papers came up. So the, the one that was specifically mentioned, uh, the first one was uh, the Clairefontaine wire book A5 notebook. Wire bound A5 notebook. There we go. Okay. <laughs> and uh, so that's uh, just a nice wire bound notebook uh, that comes in this black color. It comes in a whole bunch of other bright, sort of more primary colors mm -hmm. as well. Um, and it's just a solid, crisp white 90 GSM paper and really good construction. It's like the notebook that you had in in third grade, except all grown up. Yeah, yeah, it, it is definitely a grown up. <laughs> it's but, what but those it's, notebooks but, wanted to be. You know, it, 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 it's it's not trying to be anything it's not. You know, it's not pretending mm -hmm. to be anything it's not. It's a, it's, a, it's a good quality, excellent quality notebook, but it's intended to be used. It's not this heirloom quality. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. you see these notebooks, you, they're so pretty you don't want to write in them. Yes, I call this, it Eric Notebook Syndrome. Eric Notebooks. <laughs> the, this, the, this is a notebook that's meant to be used. It's meant to be abused. It's meant to be thrown in your backpack. Use it up, um, and, uh, and 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 they're nice, nice, nice. I love wire bound because I can just open it up on my yep. desk and boom, there we go. It's always ready. But they're also also come in staple and cloth bindings, depending on your preference. Yeah, all sorts of different kinds of binding. Yep. Yeah, and also since it's nearly February, I could not resist just adding a lovely plug for these Clairefontaine <laughs> envelopes in here. They're just just a simple white envelope. Doesn't look fancy. Matches everything. It's got a little strip on them that mm -hmm. you can. Um, that self adhesive. Seal. Yep. Mm -hmm. All important in in this new normal. <laughs> <laughs> and they come in packs of twenty five too, so they're they're and perfect for Inco Rimo. Large and large and small size. So oh yeah, that's there, there is a there is a small size mm -hmm. uh, if you're using uh, A five or using uh, or I'm sorry uh, A six or, or smaller size paper. Yeah, just so. Such a cool little, like, it's a, just a regular envelope, but fountain pen friendly. Mm -hmm. uh, next up, one of my favorite, the Hobonichi notebooks. I love these. Um, <laughs> they're available in A5 and A6. Um, and while the planners have come and gone, uh, they make these notebooks and we, we stock these all the time. And, and memo pads, which essentially are really thin, thin uh, notebooks. Mm -hmm. Perfect uh, for like closing into your Hobonichi. That one comes in a weak size mm -hmm. too. So no matter what Hobonichi you've got, they've got a memo pad that'll fit. But these notebooks are so yes. cool. I don't know how I don't have like three of them already. <laughs> uh, graph paper, and this is Tomoe River paper. Uh, and But the graph is different. It, there's four different colors of graph. So in the front, we've got, got red. a red followed by... Is that a green? We got like a, I've got a, yeah, like a bluish greenish section. And then oh, uh, gray, and then it has four different colors. Yeah. Like oh, and then a purple gray. at a the purple. end. A purple, yeah, okay. That's... But nice, nice notebook, nicely bound. Um, they lay they lay nice mm -hmm. and flat. And did we mention Tomoe River Paper? We mentioned Tomoe River Paper. That's really, really like. Great, so. And also, they've got Tomoe River paper. And they've got Tomoe River paper on them. So, uh, th 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 those are nice. And especially, I like this A6. Is really cool. Yeah, that is. Super nice. Super nice. So, like, uh, definitely a, a good, good mm -hmm. option. 
Uh, pens. Oh yeah, yeah. They were they were channeling you with with pens today. I, I, I love this pen. I have this pen. I, yeah. This is the yeah. uh, this is the Waterman Karen. This this one I have in my hand here is uh, the amber. Such um, a pretty color. Sleek, sophisticated silhouette with a long tapered cap and a barrel that ends with a little angled foot. So this is you know just kind of. Such a beautiful design. I don't know what it is about that foot, but that's like my favorite yeah. part of that pen. And that's adjustable too. So if, if that ever gets out of shape, it's supposed to line up like oh. this. But if for whatever reason it ever gets it ever gets uh, misaligned, there is a little adjustment here that you can make. That's a that's a pro tip. Um, it has this beautiful inlaid nib, which is one of the reasons I love this pen because mm -hmm. it's not just another stick with the number six Yovo nib sticking out of it. This is designed, inlaid, beautiful 18 karat gold nib, cartridge converter, uh, and this lacquer finish over the metal. It, it comes in a variety of colors, but uh, this, this amber is just gorgeous. The side angle on that nib is one yeah. of those where if I'm like looking around and just looking at random pictures on our website, that's one of the ones that I pause at yeah. and just take a moment and appreciate some really nice design. And this is supposed to resemble a bolt. Is what that's supposed to resemble. Oh. So, okay. really, and, a, and a really, really nice, nice clip too. It just really slides in. It's very elegant. It's got just a slight little raise up on the top, and it just slides into your pocket really, really well. So, I love, I love this pen. I, I have several of these. That's so, whoever cool. suggested the Kren, thumbs up because what a great, great pen. Um, Diplomat excellence got in there too. Oh, okay, like, all right. It's all Brian's no, pens. All Brian's. <laughs> Uh, this one, and. next one is definitely for me, I guess. Uh, vintage Esterbrooks mm -hmm. were mentioned. Uh, for those who don't know, the Esterbrook Company was originally established in 1858. Uh, it was the largest uh, pen company in the United States for a while. It produced 216 million pens a year at its peak. Now, we should define what that means by 216 million pens a year. Oh, good. Um, good, good. This is often, uh, this particular figure goes anywhere from uh, 100 to 216 million uh, and what they're referring to are dip pen nibs, because at the time, the a dip pen nib was referred to as a pen. Oh. So they were not making two. Uh, they were not making 100 million, 216 million of these guys a year. They were making 100 million of the dip pen nibs. Now they sold them in boxes of 144 and and more. So uh, you can kind of make you can kind of make that number work that way, but it was not 216 million actual fountain pens. I am glad you contextualized that. So there, and I see that uh, so often. Uh, in fact, I've seen it on on, on well known um, articles and well known newspapers and, and magazines that have quoted that figure completely wrong year after year. And well, there it is. Uh, Ezra closed closer doors around 1971. Uh, it was which is my birth year. Hello. Uh, but recently, it was revived by Kenwell Industries in 2018. Uh, popular models in Esterbrook, of course, include uh, the Dollar Pen, the J Series, uh, Relief, which was very popular over in England, and uh, Safari later on after the 100th anniversary. Uh, they produced a wide variety of uh, different nib units, which could be swapped out easily by simply unscrewing the nib unit from the section. Uh, as usually, Esterbrook advertised anywhere between 32 on up different nib choices. Uh, for the uh, for the customer, uh, the availability and general simple design makes the vintage Esther books a great uh, starting point for a vintage collector or a first time restorer. And uh, of course, here the brand in both the modern and the vintage uh, incarnations they hold a special special place in our heart here at Anderson Pens. And I've got a a green icicle here, which is kind of a cool uh, LJ size uh, pen from the nineteen uh, late nineteen fifties. Ooh, and one of the I, one of the nicest colors that there is, and you've got let's there. See. Do you know what you, you know what you have there? Wait a minute, you've got an L J. Is this just a regular J because it's shorter than the L J? <laughs> you, you, you are right. It is shorter than the L J. All right, I've gotten one thing right so far. If it's a short J, it's called. N is it a S J? Oh wait, what's a regular J then? The is regular right? J, the regular J is a full size model. Just between this which, one, which essentially is wait. the same length as the LJ, but fatter. Okay, all right. So, two different sizes, two different girths, mm -hmm. make up three different pens. Gotcha. All right. So uh, maybe I'll remember it this time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the, the, these are just a couple of the, the vintage ones that we have here, and there are more coming. I have a bunch that I have not yet restored. So keep your eyes open for those. 
How do you make an egg roll? You push it. There was a contest from APTV episode 473, Indeed. which I believe you were in. Mm -hmm. And uh, let me see here. What does it say? Yes. Tell us which pen, ink, and paper you think are underrated. Yes. These were fascinating comments to read through and completely impossible to summarize. So we just mm. devoted the first half of the podcast to it, but that doesn't even begin to cover it. You guys had all sorts of really cool <laughs> input. I think I think we... The, our, our comment section could have its own podcast. And we got tons of great ink suggestions. They mentioned Omos Green. Oh, was, yeah. Yeah. A bunch you of know, Omos Green was the first, the first, very first bottle of ink I ever owned. I knew there was a cool connection there. They, uh, <laughs> they, they, they gave them, they gave them out. Uh, the very first pen show I went to was Miami in 2000. And uh, uh, that was a, a door, a door prize. You walk in, you get a bottle, a free bottle of Omos Green. I bet you how many people would use their, their time travel machine if they could use one. Or they could get, <laughs> I actually, I think I have two bottles of Omaha screen left in my basement. So going to hang on to that. <laughs> Let's see. They also mentioned a lot of uh, the Colorverse line. Lots of fun, cool, sparkly mm -hmm, colors. Mm -hmm. And Quasar, the bluest blue that ever blued. Uh, <laughs> our our Kava Links got a lot of love. And uh, some classic brands like Schaefer, Pilot Orochizuku, and Waterman and Diamine. Okay. All awesome options. And there were way too many different pens to list. But it was fascinating to hear what uh, what everybody thought was was the the obscure favorites. Um, uh, I, I, I confess I didn't look at any of, the, any of the, the comments. So this is all brand new to me. So we'll see what they are. Aha. You are in for many treats. And, and I will say this is my this is my favorite under appreciated notebook. It's what do we got? See. So a couple couple here's the highlights for you. Okay. We, we uh, uh, James Med Chemiker. Oh, I hope okay. I got that right. <laughs> uh, he said, rather than an underrated ink or color, I would like to champion the archival property. I happen to work at an, in a regulated environment where data, any data or records taken on paper must be in archival blue or black ink. I wish the regulating bodies would expand the acceptable color, color gamut for such record keeping, but I digress. Uh, Oops, lost my spot. I understand that for the artistic among us, having inks that can be blotted, bled, and faded can add to the aesthetic. However, I wonder how many travel journalists uh, consider the permanence and fastness of their ink when they take their uh, rough-and-tumble leather-wrapped leather and element-exposed notebooks out in the world. And that was an excellent point. Because hmm. as a person that takes Archival. my notebooks out into the world, I do not think about that often and you're at not, all. And you're not worried about... You get caught out in the, the rain or oh, I am now or spilling your coffee or <laughs> something on it. No, I have absolutely okay. lost a page of notes because I spilled coffee on it, and that is a good point. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, uh, we've got uh, Kathy Cullen Stern. I would call Zaza a colonial blue or a Williamsburg blue. So An underrated pen is the Pilot Explorer. Mm -hmm. uh, if you like the Metropolitan, give the Explorer a try as it uses the same nib and they are interchangeable. That is true. Uh, an inexpensive, inexpensive fountain pen friendly paper that may not be well known are the caliber notebooks sold in CVS drugstores. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, I'll say hello in Philly, Eric. And Eric added a note <laughs> that Kathy did in fact okay. say hello to Eric in Philly. <laughs> All right. Very good. So I'm not, I'm not aware of these, uh, these notebooks from the CVS uh, drugstores, but uh, I'll keep my eye open next time I go to Yeah, work. now I'm curious. I, I just assume that anything I find in the wild is not this going is to be probably not going to be fun. Mm -hmm. But that's, that's an, not always the case. Every once in a while there are some surprises. So yeah. uh, that's uh, very interesting. All right, what do we got next? Let's see. Uh, Marilyn Gardner chimed in. She said, I hope the Philly Pen Show is a big success and I wish I could be there. Uh, for an underrated ink, I'm going to nominate Roaring Klinger Verdigree, which is mm. a name that got brought up a couple times. It's billed as a blue-black, but leans a bit green, so that it always appears to be a very dark teal. Work appropriate, but with a bit of flair. I dig that. I've always inked it up in something. I always have it inked up in something. Sorry. An underrated pen would be the Diplomat Excellence A+. Okay. It isn't my favorite pen. No, but it's a great writer, but with the same wonderful nib found on the Diplomat Arrow. I think it's been overshadowed by overshadowed by the Arrow, but I find it far more comfortable to hold. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, Duchess also Duchess. Has chimed in saying, Happy Thursday. Happy Thursday. Still, still relevant. <laughs> uh, seriously underrated, endless notebooks. Their paper is just amazing. Everyone that's looking for a fountain pen paper, fountain pen friendly paper, should at least try it. Uh, and we, mm -hmm. I, I will, I will 
mentioned, we have ha- we've ha- have had endless notebooks before, mm-hmm. a- and uh, and then there were some issues getting them, and then now there is actually a U.S. distributor, so uh, our ability to get endless uh, is is coming soon. Perfect. So. Now the supply will be as endless as the notebooks. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> Thank goodness. I was wondering, and he. Uh, proceeded. I completely agree on the platinum pens being underrated. That was my choice for, for my underrated pen. Okay. It was, of course, the platinum 3776. Oh, okay. I'm not bragging about my new pen at all. <laughs> Their nibs are really good and probably the most affordable. Probably the most affordable. We have a winner. Our winner. Which I've set myself up here. Joaquin Okua? Uh, Ochoa? Yeah, yeah. Maybe? I don't know. Uh, but uh, I, and who said, I don't know of any underrated pens, but I really like the color verse Shy Town. Okay. Which is, Great. Mm-hmm. And congrats, Joaquin. Congratulations. Mm-hmm. Write to Eric at eric at andersonpens.com to uh, get that credit hooked up with your account. All right. We have a new contest. Oh, yes. Do we? Yes, we do. <laughs> mm-hmm. oh, I was, what is this? I, I was thinking about this as I, as I was uh, looking at... These here envelopes, envelopes. Do you say envelope or envelope? Inquiring minds need to know. Well, see, now when you have to think about it. I, I know, I ru- um, I've ruined envelope, it. Uh, envelope, envelope, I, en- I know, I, I feel like I say envelope, but then the instant I start thinking about it, I'm you like, envelope. It. Yes, it, it, I almost mm-hmm. want to say envelope, but I, I think I probably do say envelope. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm going to have to like try to catch myself in the wild. Because I'll send you a text at like three in the afternoon. Perfect. Perfect. What is it? Just just give me a call and be like, so I need to put my letter in a what? <laughs> <laughs> well, it'll be interesting to see see how people pronounce that. Uh, envelope. Envelope. That's what I'm going to say. Yeah, I think I say envelope too. Astrobrook. New SD coming out called the Petrified Forest. Uh, now, this is going to be a new seasonal color. It's based on the petrified forest along the scenic route 66. Is that when there was a stand of trees and somebody came up behind them and said, boo? Yes, exactly. It's a stand of fossilized trees in the painted desert in Arizona. The dusty orange and red of the acrylic captures the bands of color that form what looks like giant brush strokes down the side of the mountain. Uh, It's available either in gold or palladium trim uh, and is also available in standard size or oversize. Uh, nib size is available extra fine, fine, medium, broad, 1.1 stub. Custom nib options, journaler, scribe, needlepoint by special order, and also will be extra fine flex and fine flex in steel. Ooh. So all of those nib options uh, coming soon. It is a very nice pen. Nice. Oh, it's it's gorgeous. It reminds me of like the honeycomb mixed with orange. I mean, it's just, it's stunning. It's very, very beautiful. That's very cool. Uh, anyway. What's up with these flex nibs? I, I, uh, yeah, so they're, they're, they're the new, they're the new, essentially the new Yovo um, steel flex. So extra fine flex and fine flex, and, and they're, they're pretty nice. That's really cool. So, uh, but the journal scribe and needlepoint nibs, we do have some in stock. Uh, so some of them can ship out right away, but uh, they may be special order depending on what you're looking for and what trim. Literally just in before the, uh, the, the APTV. I can't say podcast anymore. Um, these have been coming in. As we established last week, I'm hardly capable of saying APTV. <laughs> uh, the Sailor Follow the Mermaid Ooh. just arrived. Thank goodness. Uh, and look at this. Look at this. That, what a combination this is. Uh, how would you describe this? It's like a greenish yeah. teal yeah, this with the purple. Teal and sparkly It's purple. not really even a teal. It's, it's, like it's almost a, like... Seafoam. Seafoam. There we go. Seafoam. Seafoam and purple sparkle. Two-tone nib. Uh, this comes in the Pro Gear Slim in the full size. So 14 karat nib on the Slim, 21 karat nib on the full size. Um, cartridge converter, of course. It's got that nice new, new nib design. White end caps. And we noticed, you noticed... The sleeve has some real fun fun stuff going on. What do we have on the inside? We have scales we have, on the inside. Have, yeah. It's like the rainbow fish was here. And yeah. there are some coordinates on the on the sleeve. So I don't know yeah. if these are going to be leading to something or not. But uh, we're going to... 
inquiring minds need to, to know. We're going to try to figure that out after the show. So we need to figure out which one is, I don't know how coordinates work. Is this north? Like well, east or? yeah, see, you know, north is latitude and longitude, but they didn't really, they didn't give us any kind of direction. They gave us the coordinates, mm-hmm. but they didn't say if it was north or south or what it was. Point to different places depending so. on whether the the... Pen cases like this. All you need or to like know that. is it's pointed here because we have them in stock right now. That is uh, the if you sign If you sign up for a back of stock notification, you'll get a notice. So yes. uh, follow the mermaid. Now I think, and there's something else we can't talk about on that page. So I think we're right there, unless you got something All else. Right. Nope. Nope. Um, and oh, the time has come to reveal the pen in your pocket, but I took a guess at the pen that was in you your pocket, pocket while you were in Florida. Did you did you bring any fountain pens with you to Florida? This is the only pen I brought to Florida with me. Ah, actually. Ah, so the and answer. I put and I put I put a Florida appropriate ink in it, Kobe forty eight, by the way. So, uh, which is oh. a lovely, lovely kind of sea uh, ocean tealish kind of that would look amazing greenish bluish yeah. in the fall of the mermaid. Yeah. So, um, I guess since we're talking about it, uh, it is of course the vanishing point in the stripes pattern. So if you saw the little stripes and you couldn't remember what the name of it was called, it's the stripes. The stripes. So I love this pen. So that's it for this week. Thanks for joining us. Tune in next time for more talk about pens, ink, and paper. You can also check us out on social media as Anderson Pens. No, don't, <laughs> don't forget there's a store in Chicago. Ground floor of the Palmer House Hilton opens seven days a week. You can find them online at chicago.andersonpens.com. And please, please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. uh, We'll see you next time.